Hey everybody, my name is James. Most of you know me by the name Dub Digital. And today we have a very special guest that we're gonna get to interview, Silver Lake, a team member of the Zoo Ecosystem Project. How's it going, Silver Lake? Hey guys, nice to be here. Hi James, how are you today? Great, great. So we're just gonna have a casual conversation today, talk about your project, your role in the project, and what Zoo Ecosystem Project is trying to accomplish moving forward. So before we get into some of that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into crypto? As you uh, introduced me, I'm Silver Lake, and um, I've been part of the Zoo Ecosystem team since the beginning, actually, of the project. Since we launched the Zookeeper, the app, started a few years back with some curiosity, you know, looking around, and then want to know more about what's going on in there, in the, in the blockchain space. And then, you know, doing some research, uh, some finding some project that, that I like, and then doing my first investment. And then, you know, at one point, um, I connected with the, the current team of the Zoo Ecosystem and then joined the team and then being part of this project. Cool. Thanks for giving us a rundown on that. I, I love to touch on our guest Genesis story, as I like to call it. Yeah. Can you explain your role in the Zoo Ecosystem Project and how you help contribute to the team? Basically, most of the people in the, our community, they know me from the socials, from the Telegram channel mostly because I'm uh, one of the community managers there. But um, I have to explain to you basically in the in the zoo team we we don't necessarily focus on a specific role. We like to all of us contribute pretty much everywhere that like we can help in like different aspects of the project that we try to help with developing the project with um, you know interviews with uh, business development or marketing and extra stuff that we can contribute to do you find any strengths in that being able to have flexible roles it sounds like yes i would say definitely because i mean you don't have like one person stuck to do one one thing you're not stuck somewhere right so if someone let's say some project maybe someone is not available to to continue a part of the project then someone else will take over easily because they already know how to do it Mm -hmm. So if someone is, uh, you know, sometimes like uh, writing articles for the project and explaining uh, everything we do, it's not necessarily one person and then making like better articles, for example, better videos sometimes is a very, very big strength compared to two other projects. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, thanks for giving us a rundown on that. I, I guess before we get too far um, into the weeds, the listeners who haven't learned about Zoo Ecosystem for the first time, can you run them through what the project is and what the niche that is trying to satisfy? Sure. So the zoo ecosystem is divided in three parts. We have the zookeeper, the app that we started with is our yield farming uh, application that we have on the one chain and also develop on the Avalanche network. Then we also created our own NFT marketplace, which is called Open Zoo. Then the core part of the project is our gaming platform which is Zoo Games. So now Zoo Games is creating a platform that can unite gamers from all the networks, all the chains, because we are a multi-chain project. So we allow people to play from any chain that they are familiar with and to connect with the address directly to our, to our platform. When I think of GameFi, it's a very obvious use case in the obvious niche, right? It's literally fun play to earn, how do you see that interacting with like web two and the conversion over to web three? Do you think it's gonna be um, a significant factor in that transition? Definitely. We really think that the traditional gaming industry, I would say, I mean, I mean, it's huge, you know, I don't know if you are a gamer yourself, but uh, I am personally since a young age. And then within the, within the years, you, you see the evolution of the, of the gaming industry. There's so many players, there's so many new players, especially compared to 20, 30 years ago, you know, you look small and cheap compared to what we have now. Now you have everything digital and, and I mean, the growth has been crazy. And now you bring the blockchain space together with it, it's just, you know, going to grow significantly. We all know that some like famous studios like publicly announced that they already started in their transitions to Web3. The blockchain ad adoption is going to grow more and more and more than the, the, the gaming will incorporate. We have to be here when this happens. I like to think of the zoo ecosystem as like at a special nexus point between GameFi and cross-chain gameplay. And I think that's kind of a frontier that hasn't been explored too much that I think you guys are sitting on the forefront of. 
So taking into account um, cross-chain gameplay, how do you think that can affect blockchain gaming moving forward? Yes, I think you're right. When you say like um, the cross-chain aspect in the game five is not really there yet. I mean, most of the games that we have now currently are kind of focused on one chain. So they are like stuck on the specific chain that they are built on. Some of them can actually be successful, but we think that this has its limits. We don't want limits, we want limitless. So we we really want to, to, to make sure that any players can join our platform. And that's how we actually build our protocol. So our protocol allows any players any address from a network to connect and then to link to the zoo games ID that they will create. And actually the protocol automatically create a uh, one chain address for playing, but mm. all of this is invisible for the user. So everything is just frictionless. You know, the, the user just connect their wallet, create their, their gaming ID, and then they can play from anywhere. Sure. And just to expand on that, um, more chains, obviously more, potential players, right? So in theory, there can be magnitudes more participants uh, playing the same game. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, um, moving on. I, I know that you sit at the forefront, the zoo ecosystem. How does it plan to stay on the forefront of that? You know, on attracting studios and then attracting players from everywhere. And then studios like having interest into the play to earn trends. I'm talking about like uh, traditional gaming studios, but they, some of them, they actually do not know how it works. They do not know how to do, where to start from. And this is what we bring to them. This is how we help them to incorporate their game to the play to earn and, uh, and the mechanics, the rewards mechanics for, for, for their players and communities. So even some of them that don't even know, like, should we go to Web3 or not? They, they're still hesitating. And I think there's going to be a, a turning point where the gaming studio actually knows that this is the way to go and we want to be here when this happens is already live is developing fast we are just on stage one now you can already adapt the game you can already connect for the players and uh, and all your assets can connect between games and um, and the protocol and the platform moving on just a little bit more in depth in terms of the cross-chain gameplay there's a cross-chain version of the Zoo token. Can you explain a little bit for the listeners who don't know about it already, what Vizu is and how it's integral? Vizu is basically a rap version of our Zoo token. So it's a gaming token. We will use it when we introduce it to the gaming ecosystem. Um, it's going to be used for in-game transactions and so on. When you uh, cross-chain Zoo tokens from uh, one chain to Avalanche or Avalanche to one chain, which is what is possible at the moment, you are still using Vizu token through the process. It's just invisible for the user. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the that's use case which is already in place. But the main use case will be about the gaming, in introducing the, the play to earn aspect. For us, the point of a multi-chain project is to have liquidity available on main chain. So this way we help with the overall concept of the project. Then players who want to access the platform, they can access Zoo token easily from the chain they are on and they can convert easily their Zoo token to V Zoo tokens with the bridge. So having Zoo tokens available on major chains is actually only positively benefit from the adoption of the project. In the forthcoming game library being built by your team on the Zoo Games platform, uh, the first one being developed is obviously Zoo Racers, which is... I would say a Mario Kart-esque kind of racing battling type game, which is always a lot of fun. Just finished its second beta test. Can you tell us how that went and what were some of the items you learned in anticipation of the mainnet launch? Yeah, so uh, I would say that this uh, second beta was uh, quite intense, actually. It was great. It was great. A lot, a lot of fun, really, from, from the players, even from the team. We had a lot of improvement already from the V1 to V2. And now we're working on, the, on more improvements from the V3, which is uh, currently being developed. We don't have any ETA yet announced because we still focus on a, a few points left that we want to implement. But um, from the V2, we had 
so many feedbacks from our from our community and uh and I want to thank everyone, by the way, uh, who participated because um, this is helping us a lot to improve the game. What we can expect from this V3, there's going to be quite a lot of changes, actually. So we will have a brand new UI for in-game. We thought on the V2, the gameplay was very dynamic already, but we wanted more. People will have even more fun with the way we, we implemented uh, some mechanics of the game. And then another thing also, we have custom matches. So in the V2, people had to randomly join, um, you know, lobbies. And then this time they will be able to personalize a little bit the match that they want to join and then uh, create their own. One of the things that I thought was pretty unique, the utilization of NFTs in game as like attributes or boost of the attributes or weapons and so forth. I've seen some of the gameplay and it's really, it's really cool when it's actually applied. Basically the Inzu races, if we go back um, shortly about uh, this game, we, the main NFT that we have is the Zujin. So the Zujins were actually made for that specific purpose of being the 3D drivers, you know, the drivers of the cards for that space, mm -hmm. for that game. Then we also have the boosters and elixirs that were used already had a use case in uh, farming the app, Zookeeper. So the boosters will also have uh, an extra use case in Zoo Racers. For example, this one will be about boosting stats. So it's not 100% defined yet because we will also implement in the V3, but uh, there will definitely be a use case for this one and for Elixirs as well. Um, we also have uh, other games in development. Um, the only one I can talk about right now is uh, Zuno because we publicly announced uh, Zuno, which is um, from the famous card game Uno. I'm sure you know it, James. Development is going well. Uh, we are approaching the final stages. So um, we will know soon, very soon, we will know more about Zuno from, uh, from our socials. And uh, and there will be more news about uh, about this game as well very soon. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you uh, for sharing that. A um, little bit of alpha. Appreciate it. Can you explain the significant of Wayne Chain's technology in cross chain bridges and how they're aiding the zoo ecosystem in its quest to become a cross chain gaming powerhouse? So I think there is uh, actually two two major points in your question here, James. Um, mm -hmm. The first one uh, is a great great thing. NFT, um, NFT cross chain bridge is, is great. I mean, I used it for the, for the zoo gene. Uh, it was released not so long ago, actually from one chain. And then you can now send your zoo genes. So the um, NFTs used in the zoo races, you can send them from one chain to Ethereum or uh, the other way around. And so the main thing here is that people who own the Zujin can now decide to trade on one chain uh, NFT marketplace that we have uh, open zoo, but they can also decide to send them to another marketplace, which is open C in that case. And they can advertise this NFT to a wider audience, which is amazing. I mean, imagine you have your, your, your gaming NFT, then you can send them to, to, to different networks. I mean, wow. You know, yeah. we don't ask the players to necessarily do it. They don't have to cross chain the NFT. They want to play the game. Meaning that if I have some zoo genes on one chain and I have some zoo genes on Ethereum, I can just decide to connect both my addresses to zoo games platform. And then all my zoo genes will be there all together. So I won't have to cross chain them to play the game. Right. So they will all be on the platform. I just log into the games that I want to play. So if I want to play the racers, I just log into the racers. Boom. All my Zujins are there, whether whether they are on one chain or, or Ethereum. I think that's awesome, too. Just from a, like a, a real world standpoint, connect all your relevant wallets to this one single point. Bada bing, bada boom. You're ready to go. How do you see that technology, the cross-chain NFT bridge, affecting your project? How do you see it aiding in its growth? It gives the freedom of the, for the players hmm. to decide uh, what to do. And it also gives the freedom for developers. So it means that if um, a developer is on a, another chain and then they want to, they have their game or they want to create a game and then they want to, um, you know, integrate to the Zoo Games platform, then they won't have to 
rebuild or they want to have to like remint NFTs or anything like that. They will just have to connect them all. So it's just about linking the game, the address for the players onto the protocol of the platform. Everything we do since the beginning is because we want to make it easier for people. And I'm sure for game developers who, who want to integrate to, to the blockchain, whether it's now or in the future, they will have the same thought, you know, they will think like, okay, I have a game. I'm not much familiar with the blockchain industry. Um, how do I do with my game? How do we in integrate? But they want to do it the easiest way possible. And that's what we want to tell them. We want to show them that this is the easiest way, integrate on Zoo games and we will be happy with, uh, with the product. Um, would it be safe to say that it's basically breaking down the barrier to entry? It's basically making it easier. And that's kind of like the most powerful way to it acquire users right just make it the simple choice exactly and most of the project you know gaming project in the in the industry trying to to grab the attention from crypto gamers what about non-crypto gamers you know some people mm -hmm. are just looking to play they don't know much about crypto or maybe they have little interest but thing thing see some things too complicated so that's also things that we're working on you know we're trying to make make things simple for, for everyone, literally. Moving topics just a little bit. How do you see the cross-chain uh, GameFi developing over the next decade? And how do you think Zoo ecosystem will contribute to realizing that future? We think people will always play a game. They have, mm -hmm. uh, as I said before, for many, many years. And people that we didn't expect would play game many years ago are playing games now. You know, there's all type of games. Regarding market conditions, sometimes people will still play. It doesn't doesn't have to be depending on that. So for us, it's all about focusing on the, building the, the best protocol. And at the moment, um, that's what we're doing with Duke Games. You know, we want to capture as much as possible from the gaming community, the blockchain gaming community and the standard gaming community. And then we think that the we have the solution for it, basically. So we, we make it easy. We make it smooth experience for, for, for both players and developers. And then, and then that's why we think it's important, important for us to, to spread the word about, about what we do. Sure. That's actually a great way to get traction on chain. Could you please summarize why people should be excited about the Zoo ecosystem project? Everybody loves gaming, uh, in my opinion. We think that people will, will like to play a game and then we think that that's where the excitement comes from. We focus on the user experience, you know, and this is what we do. This is what we will continue to do. We are here. As I mentioned, when you, when you talk about the blockchain gaming going together, you're talking about a multi-chain uh, ecosystem um, and then easy to use, uh, then I think it's, it's a lot to be excited about. And then if you join... Uh, our upcoming V3 of our Zoo Racer game, then, then you will see what, uh, what is excitement and then, uh, and then what is gaming uh, about for us. Amazing. So you guys heard it here first. Make sure and go follow Zoo Ecosystem if you haven't already. Silver Lake, it was great talking to you. Thanks for joining. Where can people get in touch with you if they want to hear more from you? Well, the best way to follow us is uh, Twitter. We have, uh, if you go at Zoo Ecosystem all together, you can follow us on Twitter. You can ask um, us a question there. You can follow all the news there. And if you want to discuss maybe a little bit more in depth, then join our socials, join our Telegram channel, which is also the same at Zoo Ecosystem. Uh, we also have a Discord channel. And, and as I say, everybody is very active there. Everybody is very friendly. We love our community and they actually help a lot. Even during the V3 Zoo Racers now it reminds me of, uh, of this. We had a lot of streamers. We have a lot of, um, a lot of people sharing uh, some montage and some videos, you know, that was, uh, that was very exciting. So I suggest you join us uh, on socials and then we'll be there to help. Well, hey, uh, Silver Lake, always a great time. Thanks for stopping by and can't wait to talk to you soon. Thank you for inviting me, James. Thank you. Have a great right. time.